Okay, yeah, uh, my name is Jie Chu, and uh, I will introduce our recent work called uh, TransGeo. So Transformer is all you need for cross-view image geolocalization. So basically, uh, we deal with the uh, cross-view geolocalization problem. So uh, here is the problem setting. So we have this uh, query image from the street view. You can can be anywhere. And we want to localize it with the uh, every view image. So we have like a set of every view image distributed in this, in this uh, city. And we have the GPS location of the, each of the reference image. So we want to find the best matched image to localize this query. And as you can see, the big challenge here is that these two views looks very, look very different. As you can see the query and the every view image. So there is a large domain gap. And currently, uh, the predominant methods are mostly based on the CN. And as we can see, those early works, they uh, all suffer from this uh, domain gap, and they have a low performance here. And very recently, we, we can see that there are uh, three like recent papers. They all use a kind of technique called polar transform, and they are able to achieve very high performance, like uh, over over ninety percent for the uh, recall one. So basically, uh, what is this uh, polar transform? Basically, it's a kind of um, predefined transformation from one view to the other. So firstly, we have this every view image here, and we can see the uh, ground truth street view image then we do this polar transform. It transforms this every view image from uh, this every view into this um, similar layout to street view, but not real street view. So you can see they, they look similar in, this, in terms of layout, but they still have different, different content. So, and here is the equation. So basically, this kind of transformation is based on the prior knowledge on the uh, geometric information, the correspondence between those two views. And it assumes that the query lies exactly at the center of the uh, every view image. But this is not the, always the case for the real world scenario. So when the polar transform does, doesn't work, um, for example, in the Real world scenario, we may have this kind of uh, urban area. We have this every view image here. And here's the center, the uh, green star. But the query may not be at the center. So the query can be anywhere. And it may be somewhere on the street, but not the center. Here's the query. <coughs> and if we do the polar transform, we can see that the, the layout actually is still very different from this uh, ground truth query as the center does not match. And if we use this kind of polar transform to do the localization, we can actually see that the performance drops a lot if you add this polar transformation on this uh, state-of-the-art SAFA. So in this kind of scenario, how do we uh, bridge the gap? So here, the polar transform and CN doesn't work. And we turn now to find another uh, kind of methods. That is to say, we use a pure transformer design to, to do this. So uh, as we know, the vision transformer has been recently proposed, and uh, it achieves significant uh, results on all these kind of general tasks, like uh, classification, segmentation, or other tasks. And the basic idea is very simple. So you have an input image. You just break it into very small patches and just uh, put each of the patch, project them into this uh, flattened, flattened embedding, and then add this positional embedding for each patch. Then we just put them into transformer and get, get the output. So the idea is pretty simple. But actually, this kind of architecture is very suitable for our task. So the first. First advantage is that it has this uh, explicit positional information, each of the patch. And in, in our task, we want to learn the geometric correspondence between those two views. And the convolutional neural network doesn't have this positional information. So it has to rely on this polar transform. But if we have this, then we may be able to learn it. And even if they are not aligned, so we don't have the prior knowledge. 
And the second thing is that these kind of uh, transformer-based methods, they have a very strong global attention. They can learn very strong correspondence between those two patches that are even very far away. But the convolutional neural network, they really have a very limited um, field of view. So um, here is the design of uh, our architecture. So the, here we have this trace view and the every view image. We just follow the general, general pipeline. We break, break them into small patches and then project are projected into this kind of um, embedding, patch embedding. Then we add the position embedding for each patch. And we also add the other class, class token for, for the output. We put them into two different encoders to uh, learn different information for those two views. So like for the street view encoder and the error view encoder. Then we put them into this MLP head and we get the final embedding. This is trimmed with ju just the standard uh, triple loss. And we call this uh, stage one of, of our method. And then uh, we seek to find some, some uh, insight from our uh, human behavior. So like uh, for human beings, when we look at this every view image, we actually want to look into this uh, very informative regions and and try to focus on these kind of important regions. And then we may want to uh, zoom in to find some details. So here we uh, design something similar, like uh, with this kind of attend and zoom in. Firstly, we take the attention map from this every view encoder. We find these important regions. They are usually very focused on some of the streets or some of the uh, uh, informative objects. and then. We zoom in to get a very uh, high resolution uh, error view image. But this will in increase a lot of computation. Then we just we use this uh, kind of attention as a guide map and do this non uniform cropping on this. So we only keep those informative patches. So in this way, we can keep the computation the same, but we are able to focus on more details. And we put them into this uh, error view encoder. This have the shared ways with the stage one, but we want to fine tune based on that. And after this, we still train with triple loss, and then we call this a stage two training. So here is the details about the non-uniform cropping. So after we have this input and have this uh, positional embedding and patch embedding, we put them into this transformer encoder and get the output. So as we can see, only the uh, class token, the red one is the class token, Green ones are image image patches, image tokens. So only the red one, the the class token is connected with the output MLP head. So we use the correspondence between this class token and all the other image tokens as the attention map here, and we get we resize it and binarize to get this mask, and then we zoom in get the get the high resolution image. We put them together to get the final image. Okay, so here, here's, uh, let's see the evaluation. So here we want to evaluate this on um, unaligned scenario. That is to say the query image can be at arbitrary locations, not necessarily to be exactly at the center of the array image. And there is a very, there is very uh, recent data sets that can do this. So. So this data set is called Vigor and proposed uh, in CVPR last year. And it has uh, like actually has a four reference image for each query and the query uh, can be anywhere. So that is just the scenario we want to discuss. And uh, the, the query may not be at the center of, of any of the uh, reference image. And in that case, the polar transform does not work. So as we can see, here is the uh, air review image, and the query can be on the street on the uh, red star. It can also be at the other location. They look uh, kind of different, but they, they are not like necessarily to be at the center. And this data set is collect, connected um, on four of the major cities. 
covers all these uh, streets, like it have a seamless coverage on this city. And here is a comparison with all the other data sets. So basically we have mostly have more images and we, we have um, all the previous uh, data sets. They have the uh, street, street view query perfectly aligned at the center of the area of image. But in this data set, the, the location of the query can be arbitrary. And they also have the evaluation in terms of meters, which is the ultimate goal of localization. So here is the evaluation on this bigger data set. As we can see, our uh, transformer-based method significantly outperforms all the other methods. And <coughs> the gap is pretty huge, like uh, 20%. And we can also see the, this is the meter level evaluation. So we have different threshold that we want to localize. For example, we, 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 we may have a threshold of uh, 20 meters. So if, if the localization, uh, the predicted GPS location is in uh, 20 meters, um, and, and then we consider it as a, as a correct. So in this case, we can see our methods to have a much better performance than previous methods. And here, uh, we also want to evaluate on this perfectly aligned scenario. So as we can see on the CVUSA, the query is perfectly aligned on the, uh, in the center of the uh, area view image. In this case, the previous method, as we discussed, the uh, polar transform based method also works very well. And they are able to achieve a very high performance that higher than 90%. But our method is still able to uh, achieve a better performance in this scenario. And in terms of the computation, as we can see, normally these uh, Transformer-based methods has needs a large GPU memory and large uh, computation like the GFLOWs and other things. But here you, we evaluate on this um, CVSA and we can see that our method actually have a much smaller computation here in terms of the GFLOWs. And we also have a smaller G GPU memory consumption and the inference time. So, uh, so far, we have been discussed about the standard scenario that the orientation is not, but our method also is also able to generalize to scenario that the orientation is unknown. So here we can see the every, every view image, they are all aligned that the uh, up is north. So the orientation we know. But for the query, if it's perfectly aligned, then the north is in the center. But here, if it's unknown, then the north can be anywhere and you can just shift this uh, street view query to get this unknown orientation. And in this case, our method still significantly outperformed the previous uh, best method. And here we, we are doing the uh, full field of view, that is to say the panorama, we have the, uh, the, uh, we have the image for all the directions. But if we only have a limited field of view, for example, we only have half, we only know half the, of the image, like the, the street view query. Or maybe we only have a quarter of them. So in this case, we only see part of the query, but um, our method is still able to generalize in this case and outperform the previous method called the DSM. So here's some uh, visualization about the tension map. Here we can see this is street view query and this area view reference. And here we visualize the uh, last layer of tension. As we can see, this, this kind of tension map actually highlights uh, these semantic important regions, like the buildings, this, the streets, and if we check the first layer activation, then they may not be able to uh, focus on those important regions very well, but they are able to learn a very strong correlation between those two patches, which are even very far away. And here's, uh, here are some qualitative results on Vigor. So you can see 
on the left side is our street view queries and then the ground truth. And here are the retrieved reference images. So for the first first row is like a successful one. So the top top one retrieved is just the ground truth. And the second one is um, the ground truth is uh, retrieved as the second one. But the first one is actually also similar to this. And for the last one, the, the uh, ground truth is retrieved um, not in the top five retrieval. But as we can see, the top one retrieval is still um, in the near, uh, like near neighborhood. So it should still be considered as corrected if we use meter level evaluation. And here are, are some results on the CVUSA, which is more like a rural area. So there is no high, uh, tall buildings, but the, mostly they are like trees and streets. There are not, not very much information you can use, but still uh, we are able to achieve the, the correct one. So here's the conclusion. So they perform, um, we, pro we proposed like a trans pure transformer based method and we, our method does not rely on the polar transform, but we are able to achieve state of the art on all these uh, aligned and unaligned scenario. And we also see that we remove in a large portion of the patches from the error view image it does not cause uh, much performance drop. So this may indicate in like the high redundancy of this task. And we could leverage this to reduce the computation or want to improve the performance. And our code will be our released in this website. That's all for the presentation. Thank you.